Hi, I'm Andrew Malkov, and this is the fourth episode of How to Live Without Docker for Developers. In the previous episodes, I showed you how you can build a container image using Builder, and this is the link. And then, how you can push an image manually to a container registry, like Docker Hub or GitHub Packages, and this is the link for the third episode. Today, I will show you how to automate this process to push an image to a container registry using Builder and GitHub Actions. At first, I will push my code to a Git repository on GitHub, and then I will create a workflow in GitHub Actions to build my image and push it to a GitHub Packages, also known as a GitHub Container Registry. If you like videos like this, Please give me suggestions for the videos that you would like to see in the comments. And the best thing that you can do for me is to subscribe to my channel. You can also use the timestamps in the description uh, of this video to quickly jump to a specific moment. Alright, let's start. And the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to push my code to a Git repository on GitHub. But first, to be able to do this, I need to create the GitHub repository. There are multiple ways how you can do this. For example, using the GitHub command line interface, shortly CLI, or using the GitHub web portal. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open my browser and type github.com. Because I already logged in to the GitHub, I see my index page. And on the index page, as you can see, we have a button new uh, close to our repositories, which will allow us to create a new repository. So I click on this button. Then I need to specify the repository name. In my case, it will, it will be simple app. We can put some description. We can say what visibility it has, public or private, and then uh, which we want to include. For example, if you want to include the readme file or git ignore or uh, uh, a license. In my case, I don't want to include anything and my repository is public. I click create repository and my repository is created. On this page, we can also see a link to our git uh, repository, yeah, which I will copy for future use. The next thing that I'm going to do I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code and change my application a little bit. So I go to my command line and I type code dot, which will open my current folder, which is the simple app in Visual Studio Code. I click enter and Visual Studio is open. The first thing that I want to do, I want to change something on my index page to be able to see the differences between the old version and the new one. So I go to my index.html file and I change the version uh, from 4 to 5. I save the file and because of that I will clearly see that this is the new version when I will open my application. The next thing that I want to do, because I want to push my code to git repository, I want to add the git ignore file. The git ignore file allows me to say to git which files should not be in the repository. And to, to create a file, I just right click uh, here on the root folder and I click new file. I type the name, it's .gitignore. So the gitignore file is just a text file. You can type whatever you want inside, but uh, to speed up a little bit and also uh, to include everything that is generated by Visual Studio Code and the .NET, I'm going to open a browser and go to gitignore .io. This website helps you to generate the text for gitignore file. And I type Visual Studio in my case and also uh, the .NET Core. I click create and this is the just generated text for Visual Studio Code and .NET Core. I copy this text and I return to my Visual Studio Code and I paste the text here. I save the file and this text will instruct, for example, uh, the git to just ignore bin and obj folder, which are generated by the .NET uh, in the compilation process. 
So I'm pretty much happy with all the changes and right now I'm ready to push my code to a Git repository. To do that, I return to my command line and the first thing that I'm going to do is to initialize my local Git repository. To do that, I just type command git init and I click enter. As you can see, git immediately replied that it's initialized empty git repository. Now, I need to take my work dir and put it into the index of git. To do that, I type git add dot. So it will instruct git to add everything that in this folder now to the, to the staging of git. And everything right now is pushed to the staging. And the next thing, I need to just commit all the changes that we have in staging now to uh, a local repository. And to do this, I execute the command git commit. I want to specify a message, so minus m, and then I say initial commit. And I click enter. So the commit is created and everything is ready now to push it to a remote repository. To do this, I return back to my browser when I have my repository created. And I just need to copy the URL for this Git repo. I click copy and I move back to the command line. And here I'm going to add a remote repository to my local repository. And to do that, I type the command git remote add. Then I need to specify a name for my remote. I, I type origin. And then I need to insert my URL. And I click enter. And now we have remote added. And to check this, we can, we can type git remote. And we will see that origin is actually there. So I clear my screen. And then the only thing that left is to push my changes to a remote repository. And to do this, I execute git push command. Uh, when I specify minus u flag origin, this will instruct Git that I want to have my origin as a default remote repository. This will allow me in the future just type git push without specifying to where I want to push because origin will be my default remote repository. And I say flag all, so I want to push all the changes. And I click enter. And as you can see, everything now in my remote repository. So again, I switch to my browser, I just refresh this page and I see that my code is really pushed here. Everything is here. Of course, instead of uh, being an opt folder, yeah, which, which we specified in the git ignore file. Okay, so my code is on GitHub now. And the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a workflow to build my image and push my image to a GitHub packages. But before I will do this, I need to generate a personal access token to be able to push uh, an image to uh, GitHub packages. And then I'm going to put this access token to a repository secrets to be able to use it in my workflow. So to generate an access token, I open my account menu and go to settings. In the settings, I'm scrolled down to developer settings. And in the developer settings, I click on the personal access tokens and I click uh, generate a new token. I need to type my password. And in the node, I will type simple app. It's just a note to my token to be able to distinguish between one token and another token. Then I need to assign the permissions to it and I put the write packages and the read packages. And it's enough to push and pull packages. And I click generate token. The token is generated. Again, this token you will be able to see only once. So I just click copy and I will paste it in my secrets for my repository. And to create a secret, I will go to my repositories. I select my simple app repository and I go to settings. And inside the settings, you see we have a secrets. I click on secrets and I click a button new repository secret because I want to create a new one. And I name my secret registry token. And I paste my token here and I click add 
secret. So the first secret registry token is created and I want to create a new one which will hold my username and this is the registry username and my username is Ian Malkov on GitHub and I click add secret. So as a result I have two secrets in my repository one holds my username and the second one holds a token that will allow us to push an image to GitHub packages. And right now I'm ready to start building my workflow in GitHub Actions. So I scroll up and I click on Actions and I click here set up a workflow yourself. It provides me initial template but I don't want to use it so I just select everything and delete because I want to create my workflow myself. And first thing that I need to specify is just a name for my workflow. And I name it CI. And the next thing that I'm going to say on which events I want to trigger my workflow. And to do this, I specify own. I want to trigger my workflow on push. So I specify which branches I want to use. And in my case, it's a master. Then I want to also trigger my workflow when the new pull request will be created. I specify the pull request and also I attach it to my master branch. And the last event that I want to mention is workflow dispatch because I want to have ability to trigger my workflow if needed manually. I define my triggers and now I can start to define my job. I type jobs and I want to set my job ID as a build. Then I want to say on which runner I want to run my job. And to do this I type runs on and then I want to have a Linux machine so I type Ubuntu latest. Then I need to define steps for a job and I type steps and the first step for me will be checkout step. So I want to take my uh, my code from the Git repo and I do this by users actions and then checkout v2. So this is the first step which will take my source code and download it, check out it to a runner. In the next step I want to just run my builder commands. And because Builder is already pre-installed on the GitHub runner, so I don't need to do almost anything. So I just need to uh, instruct runner to run my build uh, shell script. But first I add the name for my step, which is create an image and push. Then I say run. And because I want to run the multi-line script, so I type uh, bar or pipe. And the first command that I want to execute is the command to make my build shell script executable. So I need to change the mode for this file. And to do this, I type change mode command and I want to add an executable permission to my file, which is the build shell. Then the only thing that left is to run my commands. And to do this, I type sudo you remember that we need to be a super user to be able to map our uh, container file system to our host file system. So that's why I run it from sudo and uh, I specify which file I want to run. In my case, it's a build shell. And then, as you remember, it requires to have three parameters. And the first parameter should be a version. And I can type something static like 5.0.0 but again it will means that each time when we run our workflow it will create this uh, version this tag yeah for my image which has which I want to avoid I want to have something dynamically changed yeah and to do this I can use the predefined variable for our workflow which called uh, github run number so I just type dollar github run number the second parameter for my script is the username for my registry and I keep my username in the secrets of our repository. So that's why I type dollar and double curly brackets then I type secrets 
and uh, my secret called uh, registry username. And I close double curly brackets. And the last parameter for me will be the token uh, for my registry that I also keep as a secret in my repository. So I do the same dollar and double curly brackets, secrets, and then the name of my secret, which is the registry token. And I close my curly brackets. This is it. I finished with my workflow. And because the workflow is just a text file, so I need to just commit my change. And I click start commit. And for the commit message, I type create workflow. And I click commit new file. So as you can see, I have main YAML file, which keeps my workflow. And if we go to actions, you immediately see that the workflow is triggered. Why? Because we changed a master branch and it's immediately react on this change. And I click on create a workflow and I click on the build up to be able to see the logs. As you can see now, the create and push on image step is executed. And if I see the logs, it's pretty much the same as we had locally. And now it's finished. And it means that we have a new package in our packages. To see this, I'm going to my account menu and I click repositories. On the repositories, I click on packages and I see a simple app package, which pushed one minute ago by me. And as you can see, we have 501 version, as well as the latest, which also reference to the same image. And it's published one minute ago. To be sure that everything works fine, I want to run my container based on the 501 image. And to do this, I switch to my command line. I have to switch to Linux. So I switch to my Ubuntu. And to run an image, I will type the same command that you already have seen a lot of times in my previous episodes, which is podman run. I want to have detached container because I run it on WSL2. I need to add some additional flags to avoid seeing an error messages. First one, it's a cgroup manager, which equals to cgroup FS. The second one is events backend, which equals to file. Then I need to say which port I want to map. And in my case, I want to map 8097 to port 80 inside the container. And the last parameter, it's the image that I want to use to run my container. And my image is stored on the GitHub container registry or GitHub packages. So I type ghcr io. Then I type my username on GitHub, which is Ian Malkov. Then repository name, which in my case, simple app. And the last thing, it's a tag, my version, which is 5.0.1. And I click enter. As you saw, Podman pull my image to a local cache and then it's run a container. And as a result, I have a container up and running. To test it, I open my browser and I will go to a local host, port 8097. I click enter and I can see my application version five, which is working perfectly. So this is it for this episode and for my whole series, how to live without Docker for developers. Thank you very much for watching. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can find all the links in the description to this video or in the about section of my channel. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again and see you in my next videos. Bye.